know quite know how to start in that uh, I guess I don't really go to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, Transformers conventions. I think I've been to about four or five in my life, but uh, huh? get some more. But I had to come up to this one because it's in my home country. But I love to see my countrymen every once in a while. So how many people are from Southampton here? Maybe one? Yeah. Ah, we got our Southampton people. Yeah. Well, that's where I'm from, the Shirley High Street. It was right. Yeah, yeah, we live, we rock. Hey! Right. Well, up. I came up here with my friend Mike. We like to hang about the Transformers conventions. We like it a lot. Anyway, so um, I guess what I can say is uh, who's got a question? I know, I have a blue shirt and a, his arm came out of his socket there. Right, what's your question? Oh, we'll need a microphone. Testing? Does that work? Yeah, I think it's quite slight. Right, my question to you is this. Before you started playing Cross yes. and Try, you sort of got the idea in the first version of it um, from Peter Cullen's material, but it inspired you. From Peter Cullen? Yeah. Well, in a way, it sort of did, but funnily enough, I used to do all the commercials, the television commercials for Mattel for Transformers, and you remember all these Transformers, Generation 2, batteries sold separately. Oh, yeah, I used to do all those commercials. And then when someone said to me, oh, you're going to be reading for for uh, Transformers, well, I had, got to, had to look at the G1 cartoons, and I sort of liked them, because they were, but they were really affected, all the voices had all the, you know, uh, with all the, uh, whatever they do to the voices electronically. And, um, I listened to Pete and I thought, you know, that's a great character and I think I'll try that, but when they came up with a new iteration of uh, Transformers with the Beast Machines and, uh, and, and, and Primal, because Primal was a more of an organic character, he came out of animals rather than machines, I wanted to give him a bit more warmth and a bit more humanity, and so came up with this voice. Uh, for for uh, Optimus Primal, and it was quite different from from Generation One, and uh, I thought it worked. Did it work? Yeah. 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 I just wanted to make him a more you know a more dimensional character. That's all. Uh, thank you. And what was great about it is I I got to work with Ian Corlett and of course Scott McNeil, who I've been working with for over 20 years, and. Uh, and uh, uh, Richard Newman and Venus Terzo. Oh, 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 love that girl. Who, ha, ha, do, do, do any of you know who Venus Terzo is? Yeah, Black huh? Black Arachnia? Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. Black Arachnia looks kind of hot. But Venus Terzo is really hot. And it was very funny in the cartoon in the cartoon studio with a bunch of us young fellas looking at this absolutely drop dead gorgeous young gal doing black arachnia, and we just went, oh my god, how do we ever get any work done? I don't know, but uh, we had a, a really good time of it. Uh, question, question. Yes, way in the back there. Right. Um, did you ever look at the script and see how many voices Scott McNeil was doing and just going, damn it, stop taking all the jobs? Um, yes, I did that, but you know, you got to feel sorry for Scott McNeil because he works so hard and whenever a voice audition would come up, Scott would go, pick me, pick me. No, no the thing with Scott is he, he's so... Um, he has so many different voices inside him, and such a, a, a large range. I mean, who else they could have got, you know? For Dinobot! And, uh, the only... Okay. The only voice that Scott does 
else that I can't do really good is, is uh, Waspinator. And I don't know how he does it. He's like an alien from another planet. He does Waspinator and it's like a, he's like an alien from another planet. I don't know how he does that voice. I've tried, but I just can't. But, uh, no, I never really thought that much because, hey, one voice, one job. We were doing series, uh, literally every day we were, we were recording a cartoon, or a different cartoon every day, seven days a week. And I don't know if you recall all of them, King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, and Littlest Pet Shop, Extreme Dinosaurs, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, I remember those. Well, we were recording them every day. And uh, it got to be to the point where you had to carry a little tape deck in your pocket to remember which voices were yours. So it was a lot of fun. Anyone else? Um, yes. yes. What? Where? <laughs> All right. Um, obviously, sort of Ricky Patrick, you know, to Transformers, you've done the Optimus Primal and Optimus Primal a lot. And even though they had Pete's come and come back and do it for the films, have you ever been interested in auditioning for any of the other characters at all in the Michael Bay films at all? In the Michael Bay film? No. I only wanted to, uh, I only wanted to play Optimus and, well, I guess you all know, I sent, I sent Michael Bay a letter. <laughs> and, uh, Don Murphy, who was doing the first one, I think, I sent him a letter. Needless to say, it didn't go over well, because he thought I was just some weird fan calling up, and uh, then I got really mad at him because uh, I, uh, I I was just asking for an opportunity. But of course, because I don't live in America, I live in Canada. <laughs> they went for the uh, they went for the original G1 voice, and he only did it for the one season, and I did all the rest. So I thought, well, maybe I'll have a chance at this. No. Because the fans, I don't know who they were, but it was it was about 50-50 divided between Peter Cullen and myself. And, uh, they went for Peter Cullen uh, because he was the very first one. And uh, I got no hard feelings. Bastard! No, I, <laughs> I have no hard feelings at all about it. I, most of my work that I do is on camera, so I do a lot of uh, live action work and, and a lot of cartoon work as well, so I mean, it all comes out in the wash. I don't really have a, a romantic attachment to a lot of things because basically it's, it's, that's what you do for a living, you know. I mean, you guys, you love it, and I love it as well. I mean, I, I collect all the toys. I have all the iterations at home, and all the box sets, and uh, so on and so forth. I just find it, uh, it's wonderful. I'm not going to eat myself up about uh, Michael Bay and this stupid movie. Uh, Who saw number two? Uh, what bites? <laughs> number two. I was really upset about that. I thought, you know, there's so much you could do with that Transformers movie, and what do you do? Explosions and fights that made no sense, no story, and I couldn't hear the voices of the characters. But I'm not bitter. <laughs> no, I'm, seriously, I'm not bitter. I, that, that's just a, 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 my only criticism is I couldn't hear the voices, and there was too much uh, fighting and explosions with no real story. So, Michael Bay, eat that. <laughs> anyway, next question. Yes, sir. Uh, microphone. Where's the microphone? Got yeah, right here. Yes, Simon. Um, a lot of people have got fairly mixed feelings towards beast machines, but what do you actually think about it? <laughs> Mixed feelings towards Beast Machines? Um, some people love the show, some people really can't stand it, but what do you actually think about it as a series? For me, I think that Beast Wars was the best iteration of all the Transformers. Uh, you know, some people may dislike it, but the thing about that show that I liked, it was iconic. It was one of the first CGI CGI uh, computer generated image cartoons on television and they made tremendous technical uh, advances and it was all by a couple of Brits from up here in, uh, in Geordieland, uh, Newcastle who, uh, who pioneered that, that software imaging 
I don't know if you ever see uh, the uh, the uh, the video of money th money for nothing and the checks are free. Dire Straits, remember Dire Straits? Yeah. And there was that little animated, very simple animated cartoon, money for nothing and the checks are free. Well, the guys who did that video, that Dire Straits video, are the same guys who created Beast Wars and created that company, Mainframe. So. It's quite an iconic show, and I uh, I was very, very happy with it. And for those of you who didn't like it, well, you're lost. <laughs> yes. Where are you? Gary, it's more sort of what, what you thought about Beast Machines, not sort of Beast Wars. Is it Beast Machines that people more split on? Oh, I'm seeing. Well, okay. Season 3. Was it Season 3 or Season 4? I think it's Season 3. Season four, where everybody's he's snapping at each other and they're all whining and nothing happens, and, it, and uh, Optimus Primal spends most of his time gazing at his navel, going, "The keys to the future lie buried in the past," and things like that. I actually was really annoyed at that season as well because I wanted us to be more heroic and have a bit more action in it. We started to get more introspective, and we we're sort of losing our audience, and I didn't like that. So there you go. And I agree with you. I agree with you on season three. I wasn't too happy with it either. Or season four, I mean. Wasn't too happy with it either. But it sort of came back after me screaming at the writers for a while and saying, you know, come on, get it together. And they had a good finish. Yes? Um, what current voice work are you doing now? Uh, voice work I'm in now? I'm doing a, um, well, I can announce it. I just finished a video game. Uh, for Electronic Arts, it's uh, the NFL Sports Interactive, and it's a brand new innovation of Wii, in that uh, it's kind of a football sports exercise game, but you have sensors on your legs and on your arms and on your chest to go with the uh, with the Wii controller, and if you don't work hard enough, the machine says you're not working hard enough. You must work harder. And it's, it's all, every professional football exercise that you can think of, and every exercise is run by a different player from the National Football League, and I am the coach who tells you, you're not working hard enough. And I have, I think I have about, I'm not sure, but I think 10,000 lines in this video. And so I, I worked seven or eight days, six hours a day, doing nothing but prompts for it and it's very very cool because it can it can tell how fast you're running and how fast you're jumping or how you're jumping and so on and so forth when you see it, it's coming out november 14th it's pretty cool also i don't know if you guys have heard of robots i don't know if robots has got here yet uh it's a great cartoon actually it's a cgi cartoon and they're, they're showing it on ytv in the states and uh, in uh, canada hopefully it'll come out here soon also, oh, uh, I can't say anything. I've got another cartoon, uh, another series Brian. coming up, but it's a it's a revival of an old uh, uh, an older cartoon series, similar to similar to Transformers, but I can't. I can't tell you what it is because I've signed a non-disclosure until we make the announcement. Because you have to in order to get the word. So, what? Yes, you can guess. As long as I don't say anything. It's a GoBots! No. What's the gas? Oh! What'd you say? Go Ah, he got it. Oh! So I can't confirm or deny that, but that's what it is. <laughs> so that's coming up. Uh, what else? I uh, uh, got a few. We got a new television series that is called The Killing that will be uh, airing uh, on Fox Network, I think, or AMC Network, and I think it'll air here as well. In uh, they're doing the big push between October and November. And so that got going, and uh, I, I think someone here saw it. Uh, yeah, fell away in the back, saw the uh, pilot episode in Las Vegas this year, uh, last month. And apparently it looks pretty good, so got picked up, so that's what I'll be doing. Next, anyone? Yes, ma'am. Hello, that's... Hello. There's a 
Oh, oh, sorry, what? Yeah. Wait, one second. Um, given that you've been up to this point,